Good afternoon, mga mahal, my fellow gods, beloved. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon, and I'm going to greet God's word here in this nice place. I'm still at the hospital, and uh, hallelujah, thank you, Father, for this wonderful moment. Hallelujah. Time of refreshing, hearing your presence, hearing your presence, Lord, no greater blessing, no greater blessing, oh, because got the bird, <laughs> some being So is restored. My mind is renewed. There's no better joy, Lord, than being with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful sky today. And, God, uh, I just want to glorify. God for this wonderful moment again through God's word now in the book of Zephaniah. You will learn more about Zephaniah and let's pray. Father God, as we continue to read your word, help us, Lord, to understand. Father, give us, Lord, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of you, O Father God, as we continue to read your word. In Jesus' mighty name, the name above all names, we pray. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Come, let's carry on reading. And it says here that September 23 says that the Lord is my rock and my fortress. This is the day, okay, by Samuel, the book of Samuel, chapter 2, 22, verse 2. And this is the day to buy another individual, to save another individual. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lord, that we, can, we have to tell them that they are in danger. And of course, when we are, do not have a personal relationship, our lives is really in danger, as my, I must say say that only the Lord Jesus Christ can save us it depends on that's how we believe and that God hallelujah I pray for the people to come to know you and receive you as their personal Lord and save you hallelujah thank you Jesus and it says here also that September 23 uh, says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. How sad it would be if our lives were so full we never felt the need for God. Mm. Yes, we really have to have God because we are nothing actually without the Lord. But with God, hallelujah, we have everything life here on earth is just temporary but you know what with god we will have everlasting life with him in heaven amen amen thank you father and let's continue to read the word of god in the book of zephaniah what is it is all about zephaniah father god as we continue to read your word again give us help us to understand give us wisdom Spread of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of your Father as we continue to read your word in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I think we already prayed two times. And anyway, talking to God is always be precious. Amen. Amen. All right. Vital statistics. The purpose is to shake the people of Judah out of their complacency and urge them to return to God. 
Arthur is Zephaniah, and to whom written Judah and all nations, dates written probably near the end of Zephaniah's ministry, uh, and also when King Josiah's, Josiah's great reforms began somewhere in 640 BC to 621. And the setting is uh, that King Josiah of Judah was attempting to reverse the evil trends set by the two previous kings of Judah, Manasseh and Ammon. Josiah was able to extend his influence because there wasn't a strong superpower dominating the world at that time. Azaria was declining rapidly. Zephaniah's prophecy may have been the motivating factor in Josiah's reform. Zephaniah was a contemporary of Jeremiah. Key verse is said that says, Seek the Lord, all who all you humble of the land, you who do what his commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. Key place is Jerusalem. Let's carry on. Now, overwhelming grief prolonged distress and seasoned abuse, continual persecution, and imminent punishment breed hopelessness and despair. If only we cry as we much we search our minds for a way out and look to the skies for rescue with just a glimmer of hope, we would take courage and carry on enduring until the end hope is the silver shaft of sun breaking through the storm darkened sky words of comfort in the intensive care units a letter from across the sea the first spring bird burst burst on a snow covered twig and the finish line in sight it is a rainbow, a song, a loving touch. Hope is knowing God and resting in His love. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As God's prophet Zephaniah was bound to speak the truth, this he did clearly, uh, thundering certain judgments and horrible punishments for all who would defy the Lord. God's awful wrath would sweep away everything in the land and destroy it. I will sweep away both men and animals. I will sweep away the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. The wicked will have only heaps of rubble when I cut off man from the face of the earth, declares the Lord. You can read this in Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 3. No living thing in the land would escape, and the terrible day was coming soon. The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. Listen, the cry on the day of the Lord will be bitter, the shouting of the warriors there, that day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish a day of trouble and rain, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of a day of clouds and blackness. Oh, we can sense the oppression, dispersion his listeners must have felt. They were judged guilty and they were doomed. But in the midst of this terrible pronouncement, there is hope. Amen. The first chapter of Zephaniah's prophecy is filled with terror. In chapter 2, however, our third promise appears. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what he commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. And a few verses later, we read a remnant of the house of Judah 
who will be restored. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Finally, in chapter 3, the quiet refrain grows to a recent due of God's salvation and deliverance for those who are faithful to Him in, is declared. Seeing, O daughter of Zion, shouts aloud, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your hearts, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishments. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. He never again will leave you fear any harm. And this is true. Hope grounded in the knowledge of God's justice and in His love for His people. As you read Zephaniah, listen carefully to the words of judgment. God does not take sin lightly and it will be punished. But be encouraged by the words of hope. Our God reigns and He will rescue His own. Decide to be part of that faithful remnant of souls who humbly worship and obey the living God, the living Lord. Lord, I pray that we will come to know you and receive you as our personal Lord and Savior because you are our only hope, Father. And let's carry on reading. It's the blueprint. It says the day of wrath and the day of hope. Okay, it says, says that Sephaniah warned the people of Judah, and if they refused to repent, the entire nation, including the beloved city of Jerusalem, would be lost. So the people knew that God would eventually bless them. But Sephaniah made it clear that there would be judgment first, then blessing. This judgment would not be merely punishment of sin, but also a process of purifying the people. Though we live in a fallen world surrounded by evil, we can hope in the perfect kingdom of God to come, and we can allow any punishment that touches us now to purify us from sin. Mm. All right, Father God, we need you. We can we can hope in the perfect kingdom of God to come, and we can allow any punishment that is us not to be purified from our sins. We need God's purification. We need we need God's forgiveness through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's carry on reading. It says, says Omega theme says that the theme is the day of judgment in difference to God and the day of cheer maybe i can do that because i may, I may not be able to finish reading all this and so you can read this by yourselves but let's carry on reading the explanation says that on day of judgment explanation says that uh destruction was coming because judah had forsaken the lord so the people worshipped baal molech and uh, the starry hosts even the priest makes peak and practices with faith in god God's punishment for sin was on the way. And so the importance is that to escape God's judgment, we must listen to Him, accept His correction, trust Him, and seek His guidance. If we accept Him as the Lord, we can escape His condemnation. Amen. Amen. Let's accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And so indifference to God is that although there have been occasional attempts as the explanation says that of indifference to God that although there have been occasional attempts of renewal Judah had no sorrow for his or sins the people were prosperous and they no longer cared about God God's demands for righteous living seemed irrelevant to Judah whose security and wealth made her complacent and so the importance is that don't let material comfort be a barrier to your commitment to God. Prosperity can produce an attitude of proud self-sufficiency. The only antidote is to admit that money won't save us and that we cannot save ourselves. Only God can save us and cure our indifference to spiritual matters. Indeed, amen. And it is the day of cheer. Wow, thank you, Lord. I is helping you, Father. And the day of cheer, the explanation is that 
The day of judgment will also be a day of cheer. God will judge all those who mistreat his people. He will purify his people and purging away all sin and evil. God will restore his people and give them hope. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is our hope. Hallelujah. And so the importance is that, hallelujah, when people are prayed of sin, there is great relief and hope. No matter how difficult our experience now, we can look forward to the day of celebration when God will completely restore us. It will truly be a day of cheer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your word to us and help us, Lord, to understand it more better and we continue to reflect it and read again. Thank you, Father God, and I pray that we all be saved and come to know you as our personal Lord and Savior. Come, mga mahal, the Lord Jesus is inviting us to receive him as our personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Because the Lord, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that those who ever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. And that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Jesus alone. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so we need a Savior, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so let's receive the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior from our heart, shall we? Yes, come, let's go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father and Lord Jesus. I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the 